Back to J.P. Morosi with the uh, aforementioned discussion about the Hall of Fame ballots, plural. And we'll start with the uh, with the uh, Veterans Committee ballot, if you will, the Contemporary Players ballot, right? Oversights that have a chance to be fixed on a secondary ballot. There are a lot of worthy names on this ballot. Harold and I talk about it all the time. Uh, Mattingly, Dale Murphy, Fred McGriff, who is who you want to focus on here, JP. What are his chances of being elected into the Hall of Fame on this ballot coming up this weekend? Matt and Harold, I believe those chances are very high indeed for Fred McGriff. In fact, as I look at the candidates on this ballot, I am most confident in McGriff's chances than anybody else. Wow. Uh, he is someone who got close to 500 home runs in his major league career. This was one of the great whiffs in the history of the Baseball Writers Association of America ballot. I cannot fathom why he did not get more support from our group of colleagues uh, on the baseball writer side of things. That is a Hall of Fame resume, period, full stop. He was, from my standpoint, the, the heart and soul in many ways of that Braves offense during their streak throughout the 90s. Someone who was there in October all the time, accumulated one of the highest totals of home runs and RBIs in the game's history. By any measure, a Hall of Famer. And I also think, guys, that one of the more important parts of the Veterans Committee era committee ballot is always who is on the panel. Recall the standard there is still 75%, just as it is for the writers. But of course, this is behind closed doors in a small group of people. And when you look at the electorate of who is voting, a lot of players who are Hall of Famers who are part of that conversation were either teammates or close contemporaries of Fred McGriff and know just how authoritative he was in the box as a run producer. So yes, there are certainly some more uh, candidates there, whether it's Bonds, Clemens, Palmero, some really interesting names. But of all of them, I believe Fred McGriff has the best chance. That'll be good news well for said. us because we're fans as well. Hey, let's move on to a couple of players who are on the writer's ballot. One uh, for the first time and one in his final year of eligibility. And let's go through Carlos Beltran, his chances, and you can take yourself right to Jeff Kent. Yes, okay. So Carlos Beltran, of all the first-time eligibles, he has the best chance. I'm not sure that he will get above 75%, but for me, Carlos Beltran, fourth most home runs ever by a switch hitter, all the gold gloves, elite player in center field during his prime, was involved in so many different postseason runs. Of course, he finally got a chance to win that World Series with the Astros in 2017. We know there is obviously some controversy along with that championship and the sign stealing scandal that went on. For me, as a Hall of Fame voter, I will vote for Carlos Beltran. I am not going to be deterred by what happened in his final season. Um, to me, there is a sufficient level of, of ambiguity about exactly what was going on writ large in the major leagues during that particular season for me to say that I'm going to keep him out of the Hall of Fame based on that. He certainly made a mistake. Uh, we, we know that. It, it cost him his managerial job with the New York Mets. I believe that from that standpoint, he has paid a penalty for what transpired with the Houston Astros in 2017. And so for me, on the merits of his playing career in its totality, Carlos Beltran for me is a Hall of Fame player. Now, Jeff Kent at second base. This is one more decision, uh, at least to this point, by the baseball writers that, similar to Fred McGriff, I simply do not understand the lack of support for Jeff Kent on the Hall of Fame ballot. We're talking about someone who is one of, if not the, of his time, best offensive second baseman. And I really think everybody who has a vote should go back and watch the great interview that you guys did with Rich Aurelia this week in which Rich said, hey, I played side by side with Jeff Kent for years. He was at worst above average. That was what Rich said. And that's the man who played beside him with the San Francisco Giants during that time, whether it was the Astros, the Giants. Jeff Kent played on significant teams and made a huge contribution, MVP level productivity. Guys, I simply do not understand the lack of support for Jeff Kent and I truly plead with my colleagues 
take a look at the numbers. Jeff Kent belongs in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, great. Well said, great. as always. I'd, I'd, lo I'd love to hear the rationale from a non-Kent supporter because Harold and I are with you. I don't get this. I haven't gotten it for a long time. When you hit more homers at your position <laughs> anybody than anybody, anybody that's ever played the game, you're in the building. You, you got to get in there. I mean, I'm a fan of accumulators. I'm, I wouldn't consider myself a big hall guy or a small hall guy. I just know that accumulator stats count. And when you play as long as Jeff Kent did, and you, you've hit more homers than any other second baseman in the history of the sport. you got to be in Cooperstown for me. Easy. Well, plus the difference, too, when Jeff Kent was playing second base, guys were blasting you. That was the, the goal. I'm taking the second baseman out. He had good footwork. He got rid of the ball. He made plays. I, and That's he hit point. fourth in the lineup when second basemen did not do that. Yeah. You weren't the guy in the middle of the order. Uh, that's my argument with him and, and my argument with Lou Whitaker. I don't see those two guys should be in the hall. Hey, I don't get it. JP, before we let you go, is there a player on the writer's ballot whose candidacy you think is trending the right way, who we might be welcoming into the building here in a month or so? Well, I, I think one name that I'm watching carefully is Andrew Jones. And I think Jones is someone who has had – there's been some controversy around his candidacy just in this, in the, to the extent that – he was in the Hall of Fame based on the first 10 years of his career, and then his production trailed off. And I think it's important that uh, all voters, and myself included, remember how we would have felt after the first 10 years of his career, all the gold gloves, all the home runs in center field, all the electrifying plays in the postseason. He was a Hall of Famer if he had retired right then. So why would you then penalize a player for playing longer and his production diminishing, which is what happens to all players. I, I simply don't understand uh, w when you compare the peak and all the absolutely majestic seasons that Andrew Jones put up on some historically significant teams. I go back to this, guys, and this has always been my standard, and I'll defend it from now till the end of time. If I'm going to write a chapter of the game's history of that decade or that era in which he played, how important is that player in that summary? And all I know is that for 10 years or thereabouts, when you turn on the TV in October, Andrew Jones was on there making plays. And, and that, to me, matters. He was on a significant team. He put up huge numbers, historically so. Andrew Jones is a Hall of Famer, and I believe that more and more voters are coming around to my thought process on this and seeing just how much we need to value the prime. The prime didn't last for 20 years. And that's okay. The 10 years for me were more than enough. Boy, that's you make a re really good case for him. And, uh, you know, I, I, I would consider Andrew Jones, in my mind, the perfect borderline candidate. And that, that means I could be swayed by a persuasive person such as yourself as to his Hall of Fame worthiness. We'll all learn about this together. JP, great stuff.